know y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Y'all looking so good. We have a special person coming to do our offertory prayer. Amen. Mother Casey, would you? I mean, opening prayer. The offering is always on my heart. I got a blessing with my name. go through the throne of grace. Amen. Heavenly Father, a few of the saints have gathered here today to give thanks to you. We thank you for rising this morning and seeing the love of the sunshine, for we know it comes from you. We would like to now thank you all you have done for us. We want to thank you that you we know that you are going by the sick beds in the hospital. We want you to give and touch the people there. While you're there, we are hoping that they have faith in you. We want you to go down by the jail and bless those people there. We want you to also bless the people of this nation, our president and the people in Ukraine. Lord, there's trouble in the land, and we are asking you to go there. We know you have the power to heal this nation. For that, we give thanks. And Lord, we want you to come to this branch of Zion, bless the members of this church, bless their families, and bless all the mothers who are here today. Thank you, Jesus, for our pastor, our first lady, all the leaders of this church. Make us have a heart for our people. All these blessings we think in your name, our Father, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Now y'all should have already came to church with a praise on your heart, so the praise team is going to bring y'all a little something, amen. Y'all ready? Praise team, y'all ready? Oh, come on and bless his name this morning. Oh, come on, Zion, you can do better than that. Come on and give God some praise in this house this morning. Are you glad that he woke you up this morning and started you on your way? Oh, I can't hear you, Zion. I said, I can't hear you, Zion. Are you glad the Lord our God, the one that came down all the way from heaven and saved your life? Oh, come on and put your hands together this morning. How many know that he deserves all the glory and honor? Oh, I can't hear you. Come on. How many know he deserves all the glory and honor?
everybody else like our God. Come on, you ought to give them a praise this morning.
Introduce to some and present to others my twin. I don't see her husband in here, so he can introduce her for this brief sermonette for Mother's Day. Amen. Y'all give my sister, Minister Shaw, a hand. Oh, come on and clap your hands for God this morning. Oh, come on and clap your hands for God this morning. If He's done anything for you, you ought to be on your feet and telling God thank you. you I won't be long I'll be just long enough get your Bibles get your Bibles to the book of Titus chapter 2 verse number 3 glory to God if you need a Bible raise your hand and our usher will give you one amen it is the book of Titus chapter 2 verse number 3 if you have it Please say amen. amen. If you need a moment, say wait on, wait on me. Wait on me. That is the book of Titus. Chapter 2, verse number 3. We just don't deal with that one. Amen. amen. And the word reads, Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior. Not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good. You all may be seated. I know it's Mother's Day today, 
But we're going to focus on the mothers of the church today. Amen. Glory to God. If I had a way to encourage you mothers of the church today, it is mothers, we need you. Yes. Glory to God. The book of Titus is the 17th book in the New Testament. Titus is, he's a disciple of Paul. In this particular chapter, Paul is writing to Titus to, while Titus is setting the church up to remind him of the duties that he must continue to preach in sound doctrine. The very first one, he, told, he tells Titus, hey, don't forget to preach in sound doctrine. The second verse, he talks about how you should teach the men. And he gets to verse 3, and he says, likewise, teach older women to be reverent in the way they lead, they live. I looked up the term reverent, and it means showing deeply so solemn and respect. My first point, the reason why, mothers, we need you is because of your obedience. It is your obedience to God that moves the heart of God. Not only that, the wisdom that lies on the inside of you, you can teach me something, how to be faithful unto God. Amen. And we go into my point too. He says the reason mothers, mothers, the reason why we need you is because of your wisdom. Because every word you speak out, it comes from God. It doesn't come from yourself. It, it doesn't come from anyone else. You live a life of legacy that you can teach me. I'm talking about me right now. You can teach me how to be a better wife. You can teach me how to be a better servant of God. You can teach me how to make meal out of little meals. Mothers, we need you. We need your weeping and wailing. We need you. We need your hollering out. We need you. Glory to God. I told you I won't be here long. Mothers, we need you. It is because you are a woman of valor. This means you're a woman of power. This means you're a woman of authority. This means you're a woman of holiness. Can't everybody, they can be a mother, but they can't be a mother. Jesus. They can't go where you can go in God for us. For us women that is coming up behind you. You are a legacy. You have so much wisdom in you that you can just, just give it out. Just give it out. Just give it out. Mothers, we need your presence. We need your presence. We need your hellos, your goodbyes, your amens. We need everything that God has given you up to this present time. Woo, Jesus. Mothers, we need you. My first point is we need you because of your obedience. My second point, we need you because of your wisdom. And my last and final point is we need you because you are a woman of valor. God bless you. Oh, come on and clap your hands for God today. How many want to be free today? How many want to be free today? Glory to God. I came to have church today.
But guess what? It's offering time. Y'all know what time it is. It ain't about how much money you give. It's about what? It's about what? Okay, then. Y'all know God got a blessing with your name on it. Y'all gonna jam with me today. I know y'all missed me last week. Y'all gotta give me some. This is right. Your ears and your hearts. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand, praise. If you love the Lord, come on, give Him a praise. If God has been good to you, come on, give Him a praise. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Amen. Let's clap your hands like you love the Lord. Amen. We're just grateful, amen, for what all God is doing, amen, up to this point. Amen. We just want to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. Amen. On the behalf of the men of Abraham here at Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church. Amen. So what the men folks are going to do this afternoon, amen, we want to feed all the mothers today. Not just church mothers, but everyone that is a mother. Amen. We want to serve you, amen, dinner after church. So if you hang around, amen, we will serve you. And if you're not a mother... We would like to sell you a dinner after church. Amen. If you're a man, we'll catch you on next month. 
Amen. Thank the Lord, all right. Amen. Amen. But we're just grateful, amen, and we just bless you guys. And I just want to say, if you have a mother, treasure your mother, amen, because when she's gone, it's, that's, that's all. So while she's here, love her, give her her flowers while she yet live. Amen. Somebody give God a hand, praise. Amen. In other menu, we have we have some cabbage greens, we have some green beans, we have some rice, we have some turkey, we have some ribs, we have some we have some brisket, we have some mac and cheese, we have some potato salad, and we have some pound cake. Ain't the Lord all right? Amen. Come on, give God a hand, praise. That sound good, don't it? Y'all almost ready to eat, right? We got a few more orders of business. We got past you, Pastor Alls, coming with another brief announcement. So, now that he done open y'all stomachs, I need y'all to open y'all minds and y'all hearts this time for the word. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Mount. And visitors. Amen. I had to turn Facebook off this morning because my mom ain't here. I know, right? And it threw me in a move I tried to avoid. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I stand before y'all this morning uh -huh. on behalf of this church representing this pastor. <laughs> Mother Bell gave me a pretty good idea. And then Mother Porter gave me another one. So I'm going to tell you Mother Bell's idea. Our pastor don't get paid. So every Sunday, we're going to collect the offering for our pastor. And we're going to present it to him on third Sunday. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because everybody him go to work on Monday expect to get paid for eight hours on Monday. Yeah. Not that he's in need because he got a job he's been on a long time. Talk about it. But according to scripture, if we bless the man of God, yes, blessings will rest in our house. Yes, now, God bless me individually. I'm talking about he's good to me, my family. But I'm talking about a collective blessing uh -huh. from right here. Yes, this way the blessing is going to rest upon your house set when we bless the man of God. And it's really not fair. So we're going to call the usher down right now so we can come around one more time. Then we're going to do it next Sunday and present it to him. And every Sunday after that, can I, amen? Amen? And then, Mother Porter came over with that part of it. Let's bless it every Sunday. And then on the fourth, third Sunday, we're going to present it to our pastor. And if you just trust the process, watch what God do on the other side of the comma. See, you got bless the pastor, comma, the other side of the comma. Oh, it's so quiet. Do I need to do my favorite line? Things that make you go, hmm. Come on now. This is our pastor right here. Whether you love him or not, we got to do the right thing. So if you don't mind, just come on back around one more time and bless our pastor. We're not going to present it to him today because we're going to do it again third Sunday. And every third Sunday, we're going to present our pastor with his monthly salary that we collect from us. Amen? Amen. We're not going to ask you to put it in a tithing envelope because that's business of his own. But we're going to come around and drop it on the basket. Okay. At any time during this conversation, you, it's okay to get up and come on around. Let's bless, our, let's bless this man of God. Huh? We got electronic payments too. Go back there to that little office back there. All right, come on now, come on now. And you can also sell it. See, we're not begging for money. We're trying to get a collective blessing. You bless the man of God, and blessings will rest in your house. Amen. If you don't have it today, bring it next Sunday. Because this is going to be a whole home going thing every Sunday. So we can bless our man of God. Amen. Thank you. The Lord told me 
to do this. Just in case y'all wondering why, it was him who told me to do this, and I got to do what God said do. Amen? Amen. 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 Lord, we ask that you bless this offering that we're giving to our pastor as a form of income. Lord, we ask that you increase it 100 fold in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, y'all know the women of Zion always give the women inspiration. So it's Mother's Day. So, Sister Farrah B, a.k.a. Cinnamon Honey Bun. <laughs> she the rapper of the church, right? Good morning, church. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. I'm just going to give you a few encouraging words this morning. It will be coming from Proverbs 31, 25 on 30. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. We are born of love. Love is our mother who birthed us into this world to the world you might just be one person, but to one person you might just be the world. A mother holds her child's hand for a while, but their heart forever. Mothers are like glue. Even when you can't see them, they're, hold, they're still holding the family together. The women of Zion are inspired by the faithful mothers of the church. Thank you, mothers. And are here today, and those who are no longer with us, but live in our hearts. Um, and the words from my pastor, keep on fighting. Happy Mother's Day. Amen, amen. It, ain't it amazing how God chose us women to, to borrow something, I mean, to hold it inside for it to grow, and then it comes out breathing, talking, and then when they get older, they talk back. But as a mother, you're supposed to do what? Train up your child, right? Right. Your kids are a reflection of you, so when you show them love, they're going to show it back. Amen? So now we have our scripture from my 10 twin deaconess, Letitia Armstead, a.k.a. Boo Pudding. Y'all, she make the best banana pudding in Orlando. Amen? Good morning, church. Can we all please stand for the reading of God's word? We'll be coming from a familiar scripture in the book of Genesis, the second chapter. That's Genesis, the second chapter. And we're going to start at verse 18 through verses 23. And it says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam, ever Adam called them a creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to the beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helpmate for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made woman, and he brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bones of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. May God have a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of this holy word. Woe man. She shall be called woe man. Amen. And then some of us on to become mothers. Amen. It's Mother's Day. Y'all give yourselves a hand one more time. Now y'all give a big round of applause for the Lord God our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm 
Y'all know our pastor, they got two for one ladies get in free. But it come with a price, amen. As our pastor say, amen. Y'all ready for the word? Say, amen. I'm going to present to some and introduce to others my pastor, Stanley. I mean, hold on, let me say that back. My pastor, y'all pastor, overseer, Stanley L. Murray. Come on, put your hands up for the Lord this morning. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord this morning. For he is worthy of all of our praise. I'm in a good mood this morning. We're going to go back for a minute. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Half of y'all. 
Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Y'all, we don't know where everybody don't know where we at. Go to the book of St. John, chapter 3. Verse 16. The book of St. John, chapter 3, verse 16. If you have it, would you stand on your feet for the reading of the revealed word of God? Amen. Amen. Please, please stand for just a moment in time. The book of St. John, chapter 3, verse 16. Father God, we come this morning with the spirit to hear your word. Lord, we come to be appreciative of all the mothers in the world, Lord. God, we honor anyone who is standing in the gap as an ambassador for a mother today, God. Any grandmothers, any aunties, any uncles, any fathers, any brothers, any sisters, anybody, Lord, anyone that adopted any children, anyone that fostered any children, anyone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for letting them train up a child in the way that she go. And when they grow old, they shall not depart. Father God, we ask the word be rich, be righteous, and be relevant to all of God's people today. We say amen, amen, amen. amen. The book of St. John, chapter 3, verse 16, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what I love about the Lord is he will give you what he needs for his people. When you look at this scripture in the forefront, you will say, well, what did that have to do with Mother's Day? Uh, you begin to see. I remember as a young boy how important it was on Mother's Day. Sometimes as a young boy, I couldn't sleep all night. I went out and from my color, I raked the yard and cut a grass and went to the little store. Got my mama a card. Or put a piece of candy in it. Or Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all didn't, you know, y'all yeah. But I was a mama's boy. Now, first thing I'm going to get to say that. <laughs> but I was a mama's boy. And so, to be honest, I'm a mother's boy. I have this thing that is two people you don't bother in the church. And I'm sure Michael Jackson misses his mom. That's your ringtone cousin. Yeah, Jesus. Now, sister Paul when I hear today is <laughs> but I just had to think about mothers. I, 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 I love the, the ambition of a mother. I love the, 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 the nurturing of a mother. I love the, the drive to, to succeed in her children. I, I, I love the way a mother will, will, will take everything that she has and put it to the side just for her child. Let me help you now. We ain't finna beat up no daddies now. Cause we do what we can while we can. Okay? Don't y'all get all high up, y'all leave us down here. Let me help you. Okay. Uh, I'm saying. Uh, 
Yeah. Just so you know, man, you lacking it out. It started with bro man. Okay, just so you know. You had to get with bro man before all that came about. So don't dog him out now. He gave you that package. But anyway, God began to tell us how important a mother should be. So I looked at the scripture, God, what would you have? He said, I want you to remind him something. It's okay. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten so that whosoever believes him should not perish but have everlasting life. And clear as day, I heard my mother say, Look at somebody say, Pastor, I'll preach about. Pastor, I'll preach about. We know better. We know better. We who have been experienced or exposed to the living God, we 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 know better. Those of us who have made some mistakes in our life, but now can say we walk in miracles, we know better. And as you look at the way this world is just twisting and turning, that when you turn on and look at anything related to the news, nothing of increased edification, nothing of education, nothing of elevation, nothing that makes you feel better about being in the world. Uh -huh. That's right. All it talks about is war, destruction. Somebody arguing with this person, and that person don't like this person, and and, 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 and there's no seem to be no love left. In the world. And one of the most beautiful things you could count on with a mother, if nothing else, was a mother's love. Now that might come by switch. It might come by the back of a hand. But it was love. And if mama didn't put her hands on you, then can we say she loved? I know you're saying, we put our kids in time out. I'm not knocking it. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. Not, but I ain't saying I was wrong the way I grew up either because I grew up just fine. And my mama was quick with the switch. She was quick. She was, she was a subject matter expert of switches. And when she sent us out in the front yard to pull one off, y'all not going to get this, but you get it with it. To pull one off the tree and you tried to be slick and get one that was a little thinner. Yeah, 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 yeah. You tried to work it out there. It would break, so you figured she would cut back on the switch. And mother would take another one, tie to another one, and go right back to what she was saying. Go right in the kitchen, fix you something to eat. Somebody know what I'm talking about. That kind of mother's love. Where has it gone? Mothers who realize that. Some were military wives, like my wife, where the husband was not in the household. And they had to help raise the household, but they never let them forget who was head of the household. Right. Some mothers who widows and still raising their children. They always reminded the children how their father was. And what I'm seeing now more than ever is legacies are beginning to drift further and further apart. We're not telling our children of where they came from, how they grew up, what their grandmothers and great-grandfathers and uncles and who they were and how important they were in the world. And so what we have now, we have children who run rampant not knowing who they really are. And as I've been told, if you don't know who you are, the streets are teaching. But the problem is with the streets, is the streets is full of lies and games. And the streets does not want to bring the best out of you, but it will manipulate the worst from you. We know better. So let's look at the text, if we will. He, he brings it to our remembrance here. He said, for God so loved the world. Yes. So my first point of knowing we know better, how are we loving? Wow. I know we do real good at liking people, places, and things, but are we really loving people, places, and things? 
Because love has three critical points to it. Love is correction. And if you love anything or anybody in the place, you got to be willing to correct and be corrected. But let's be honest, we don't want nobody telling us. Because I can just Google it. Ain't nothing on the internet a lie. It got to be true, it's printed. And what you got now is a generation and past generations who've fallen off the wagon and not even taught a young man how to tie a tie. I bring up this story all the time because it's really embarrassing to hear from a man's standpoint. But I was working one afternoon, one evening, I'm driving and this lady was sitting there with her hood up on her car and, and I pull up next to her in my, in my police car and I pull up and I said, ma'am, what's wrong? She said, I think it's my battery. And I get out of my car and I get ready to walk, but you know, police kick in. I said, who else in the car? <laughs> and I look in the car and one of your cousins, one of your bros is sitting up there with his foot on the dashboard just like this. <laughs> He's standing outside the car in the hot sun. He's sitting in the car with his foot on the dashboard. So I said, hey man, uh, come on, help me put these battery cables on the car. Let's hook it up. I swing around, I pull out my cables, grab mine, I hook up. I said, hey man, go ahead and hook up. He said, man, I don't do that. She said, move boy. She took the cable, put it where they needed to be. Y'all not catching this. Put it where they needed to be, got the car cranked up, and pulled up. But before she left, I said, where y'all fellowship at? Oh, <laughs> uh, we don't really have to sit look at Come on, Bob, let me, let me help you with some things. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm just being straight up, and I don't mean no harm, but I mean what I say. There ain't no way you're going to be a man and stand around me and not be no man. There's some things you just got to know. There's some things you just got to be able to do. You're not going to be around talking about you a man just because you stand up when you go to the bathroom. Because look at that, what you do, you squat. Get that in a minute. Real men know how to handle business. Real men know how to have a mother feel secure, feel safe. Know that she don't have to worry about the simple things of life. Y'all don't like this, but it's okay. How are you loving? I watched the other day, the, 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 the lady, the older lady was trying to get into, into publish. You could tell she was having a hard time. I don't know how many men I've seen walk by her. In a hurry to get into the stove. So you know me, I, I, I come on, mother, I got you. She said, "Thank you, babe." Help somebody. I know what you're saying. Well, she didn't ask for no help. She ain't gotta ask for no help. The God I serve started working in my belly and said, "If that was my mother, would somebody stop and help her?" Where's the chivalry going? Where, where is it going? I don't know why I'm wired up on this page, but it's just Mother's Day. I get it. But we got to start loving back. If we start loving mothers back to where they're supposed to be, just maybe they can love back within themselves to be the wives we ask them to be. How are we loving? Now, ladies, let me help you. Oh, y'all get all, get all pumped up. Let me help you. If you go want this love, uh, hey. <laughs> you got to work with it. You can't judge it. You got a type A personality, a husband, he's an alpha male. I'm just talking about myself. Okay. Okay. Then you want to step back and let him be. Here's the problem. Y'all done raised your house so long. As soon as he finally come in, you still want to have lead vote. I'm not saying we don't work together. We work together as one, Lord, but you got to trust and believe that if God sent you a man and you know this is the man that God sent you, then let him be the man that God sent you. Don't try to be the man and the woman. Just be the woman and say, ooh, baby, you got that? That's my boo. 
Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. It's okay. Y'all fighting today. But I come by the curse of blood washed believers that if we start putting love back in the relationship like it's supposed to be, then they will be what it's supposed to be. Talking to your single friend about your married husband. She ain't even got no man. Girl, if I was you, I wouldn't put up with it. I know, that's why you say that. And you don't look no happier than me. I'm going to be honest with you now. He might have his stuff every now and then, but girl, it ain't that bad. Amen. They sing here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he gave us the Lord so we would know how family was supposed to really work. Now y'all ain't gonna like this, but it's okay. I was teaching in, in, in Sunday school this morning. The problem we have with family is we don't know our roles. Now I'm not a showman this morning, anything. My wife do whatever she wants, she grow on. However, come. There is no mistake. Help somebody. My last name is Murray. Her last name is Murray. Okay. Her maiden name is Carter. My last name is still Murray. Y'all put that together in a minute. What I'm saying is when you decide that you want to share and intertwine together, then as a family, you have to sit down and start figuring out what is the best way to keep love in the house. But see, y'all trying to figure out who make more than what. Who gonna put this on this on their bill? Who gonna who gonna handle the credit on that? Who gonna who gonna pick up the kids at four and drop them off at six? I get that. All that's part of the deal. But if there's no love in the house, does it really matter? That's right. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And we see so many families they go through these over and over and over again. All they doing is just really just strenuing and straining the relationship and the family orientation. And you got mothers of those mothers who are sitting at home going, Lord, just bless my child. Amen. My God. Lord, bless my sons. Show him what he needs to know so he can be a good husband. Lord, bless my daughter. Show her that that man really love her. They mean something to her. And all she got to do is get over Lester and Leroy. Y'all not talking about <laughs> Lester and Leroy and Lottie and stop looking at who God really gave her so she can learn and love. You sitting there and you questioning everything you've been through. And you sitting there in your mind and you trying to decide if those sleeping pills ain't as bad as it sounds. <laughs> then I can't go another day like this. And the world would be better off if I wasn't here. Somebody know what I'm talking about. And all they got to do now is just look over at that picture, that family picture. Yeah. And begin to hear the Spirit of God say, listen, though they try to slay you, yet where you live, that you might be going through some things in your mind, my daughter, my son. But I stop by to tell you, you beautifully and wonderfully made. And all you got to do is claim who you are in God. You are God in the blood washed believers that will say, I know better. number one rule at my house. Y'all ain't gonna kill me. I know what I'm worth dead. And that's too much for y'all to enjoy. So I ain't going nowhere. Y'all about to say, okay, I'm by myself on now. I'm gonna be here for a good little while, mama. I'm not saying first day to look for me to go nowhere, but I don't want her to enjoy it if I ain't gonna shit. <laughs> So I'm selfish enough to hang around and we just be broke together. And I'm far from that. They caught that thing. How we love him. Then he says, 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Now he's saying, what are we believing? One of the major ingredients that made a strong mother was she was able to take a little bit of something and make a lot of it. They had this old word, they used to call it goulash. That's when you open up the cupboard and go, put everything Slide it into a pot and the kids can't stop sucking their fighting. They don't know what to do. Mama, what that is you made? That little soup, boo boo. Just a little soup. Don't worry about it. She used to take it. Hey, she used to take a little chicken and spoil it until it fell off the bowl, put it with the rice. Grandma said they called it perlo. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. They used to make that food way. Yeah, you, you wonder how much it cost to make it. She made it with pennies. Now y'all got your kids. I don't eat that. I don't like that, mama. You ain't hungry. Let it sit a little while. You'll be hungry. <laughs> but you know what y'all did? You forgot you gave your kids credit cards, and now you got Google and Hub Hub knocking at your door. You go upstairs under the bed full of nothing but plates. I ain't by myself. Y'all don't want that. Y'all don't want that. Pizza Hut and, 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 and Papa John's and Mama John's and Father John's, y'all got everything up under the bed now. Ain't learned nothing. Won't get outside because it's too hot. We used to play all day long. You was thirsty, you drink water out of hot water hose. It tastes like rubble. Sam, you know what I'm talking about. We go play football at school, come home and play in the past. We didn't want to come home. Now they won't leave. You had to mark your own food in your own refrigerator. Hey, don't touch. This my refrigerator. This my life. This my house. Touch. It. I'm about to say y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Everything's fine where y'all live. I can tell where y'all. It's, it's good. But every now and then we have to we pray, right, baby? Just pray. My wife. In our infinite wisdom of humor. <laughs> you remember the movie Saw? Yep. Yeah. So we have a refrigerator you can write on the screen, right? <laughs> she wanted it, we bought it. So she, she wrote on the refrigerator screen. In the refrigerator, there are three bottles. <laughs> One of the bottles <laughs> has something in it that's going to cause you to stay on the toilet. <laughs> Since y'all so thirsty drinking up everything. <laughs> then she put out the bottom in bold letters, let the games begin. <laughs> How many know we had three full bottles of juice for a week? <laughs> Went on faith, wasn't nothing in it. <laughs> but that's the kind of family humor you ought to have. That you can be able to relate with your kids. I, I bring this up a lot. My daughter, bless her heart, she did what we call a lemon squeeze. All the family comes together, we sit down, and we just talk about everybody get to say whatever they want to say. Ain't no deal breaker. Yeah. Whatever's on your heart, get it out. <laughs> and it's amazing what people's minds are. But if we had not had that, we never would have known. When's the last time you started at the dinner table where everybody, nobody had a phone? Wow. <laughs> we don't communicate very well anymore. How is it that our children are willing to not tell you that they're hurting, but put a suicide note on Facebook to nobody they can. The enemy has tricked them into believing that their house is not a home. I'm very adamant about 
I tell people I run my house, but my wife manages it. Because I don't have what's going on. <laughs> but I know what's going on. Because <laughs> I understand the relationship that we have built. She's very good about knowing what's going on. Yeah. I'll catch it. And ask God to show it to me. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we're in agreement that our home must be happy. Is your house happy? Is your home full of joy and love? And if it's not, why? And if it isn't, what can I do to fix it? Who do I need to add in? And who do I need to let go? This ain't what y'all came for. Happy Mother's Day. Because in order for mother to be the mother she's supposed to be, she has to feel secure. Come on, Reverend, help somebody. And for you mothers who may say, I don't have no hubby yet, it's just me and the Lord. You still have to feel secure. And so stay around the house of God that it reminds you that you matter even when you think you don't matter. So I'm getting out of here. It's my last part here. He says, but have everlasting life. We know better. How are we living? What are we believing? Because he said, whoever believeth in him should not perish. Brothers and sisters, some of the stuff we're going through, we don't really have to go through. <clears throat> Something. Now, there are some things that we're going to go through whether we saved or unsaved. Yeah. The beauty is we don't have to go through by ourselves. Yeah. But there is something God gave us a stop sign or an exit off of that we refuse to read the sign. Wow. Because we had to have them. Wow. We had to have it. And so I tell people, even in forgiveness, that still doesn't mean it's not a consequence to everything you do and everything you say. Amen. Even with God's love, there's still the room for consequence. So, he, he, he brings it all home here. He says, but who but have everlasting life? Now he's saying we know better. How are we living? What are we believing? Now he's saying, how are we living? One of the most beautiful things that I will share about my mother before she passed is that God fixed it for me to have to bring her to live with me Amen. the last four or five years of her life. And what I saw when I would, I would look over at her was in my eyes, her prayers being answered. That she was able to see what she prayed God would do with her child. Amen. And you young folk, y'all hear me well. Even when you don't talk to your mom, she praying that you're protected and covered. Even in your foolishness, that you ain't ashamed to hide no more. You walk around boastering and boasting about what you got and what you're doing. And mama saying, cover my baby. He just think he know. She just thinks she know. Cover her. And so for every one of you mothers who believe you got your answers prayer, your prayers answered about your children, just, just put your hands together for God. And say, God, just when I thought he wasn't going to make it, you made it for him. Just when my baby looked like she wasn't going to go nowhere, you brought her out of something and made it more than what she was going into. Just when the doctor said she'd never do this again, you made her well for me, Lord. That's the kind of God we got. And so, can I tell you about how we can get better? The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever so believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I don't know about you, but I like living in the land of Bethlehem. See, Bethlehem says, 
that even when you've done something, God will make it right. Bible says, even when you say something, God will clean it up. Does anybody know about a land called Better? Where that land started some 40 and two generations. That land started being born in a manger. Sound like better to me. That land started wrapped in swallowed clothing. Sound like better to me. I heard, I heard that better was put on a cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. Y'all know him, don't you? He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Y'all know him, don't you? He's a bright and morning star. Y'all know him, don't you? He is the Rose of Sharon. Yeah! I think about mother. They put him in a tomb. And his mother Mary, all day Friday, can you picture her walking back and forth? Could nothing get out, and could nothing get in. Sometimes your mama, my mama, was walking the halls and saying, Lord, save my child. Lord, take care of my baby. He's there in the incubator. The doctor's saying he was premature. She was premature. But I believe you'll put your hand on my baby. Yeah! Some say my baby got hit in a car wreck. But God, I believe you're going to build him up. Yeah! Some might say there was a gunshot and the bullet missed. Yeah! Could have been dead, should have been dead. But Lord, you saved my child. Is there anybody that know what I'm talking about? Yeah! Some might say he was in the courtroom. They tried to lock my child up, but Lord, I prayed, and you heard, set him free, and make him yours, yeah, is there anybody that knows, all day Saturday, there he lay, mama still praying, Saturday night, mama still praying, but uh, one Sunday morning, he got up with some power, so to say, my child, he got up, she got up, saying, mama, I know better, I fixed myself, I fixed my house, I fixed my kids, yeah, I'm going to church, I'm reading the word, I'm praying, I'm loving, I'm learning, and I'm living for God. Yeah! Is there anybody that can understand, touch, and agree? Say, Pastor, that was, that was me, but I'm free, free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. better you do better and I want to offer this opportunity today some of you may be able to go back in your mind and say you know mama told me I needed to get myself together she told me that no matter all the stuff I gained Jesus, none of it's going to matter. That I have to give my life to Christ in the pardon of my sins. 
If that person is you, won't you come while there's still time to give your life unto you? To accept him as your Lord and your Savior while you have time. Maybe you say, you know what, I know the Lord for myself, but I don't have a church home, a place of accountability, responsibility, and reliability because I'm not in a place of availability. While there's still time. I want to do something special. If you are a mother and actually you would stand today. First lady will come and pray over all of our mothers today. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for these mothers that are standing in this house of worship right now, dear God. God, we ask you to touch us. Bless us, God. Bless us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet, dear God. And heal and set free and deliver in the name of Jesus. Lord, go home with us today. God, we ask you to touch our homes, dear God. Heal our homes, dear God. And bless us, dear God. Touch our children, God. Well, keep them under your blood, Father. God, and protect them from our hurt, harm, death, and danger. Protect them from all evil entities that tries to come against them right now. And we plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, dear God. And God, we thank you. We thank you for the children that you have blessed us with. And we ask you just to have your way in their lives. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask. Right now. Amen. 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 Just sit for a second. We want to bless our mothers today. Um. And um, Tiana and, and Natasha, if you guys could come up. We're asking all of our mothers, if you would stand again, not the mother's board, but just the mothers and the congregation and, and the quiet stand, if you're our mother, stand. Yes, sit down, sorry. It looks like we have 23, Tasha and Tiana, so everyone can get both. <laughs> I heard somebody say that I'm a God mama. <laughs> so you, you're going to re be receiving two items, so if you could just remain standing after, your, after you receive your bag. And Q, if you can get the others out of the freezer, This is just a little token of appreciation from Reverend and I, and we just want to bless our mothers. We know what you all go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. We know That's some mine. of us um, stay on our knees praying for our children. Even when they they get hurt, they hurt themselves, and when they hurt themselves playing their sports and anything else, but they don't understand this. It may be a little scratch for them, but to us, we feel that pain deeper than you all are even feeling that when you are hurting. And we just want to thank you all. So although this is coming from Reverend and I, just take it as it's coming from your child as a thank you. And if you're here with your mom, look at your mom and tell you thank, tell her thank you. Thank you. Thank, love you too. Yes, I hear my baby. <laughs> The little cakes are from nothing but cakes that they are turning out to be my favorite place. This is for our mother.
mothers for the, the old and the new. And over here, once you receive your two items, your bag and your cake, then you can have a seat. Because I don't know about y'all, but standing in these hills is a lot. And now we also are going to bless our mothers and our mother's boys. So Reverend, Reverend, what is that? So Reverend is going to take it. And just so all of y'all know, I'm preaching for Father's Day. So that's going to be my message. We have to clear that with management. <laughs> Amen. Mr. Geraldine wanted to sit down uh, uh, for our mother's board. Santa for our mother's board from your babies of this generation. I said thank you for being all that you can with the youth. They went in custom yards and Clean your room for at least a day. Amen. Amen. Y'all have to step up. tables on the inside in a banquet style. Uh, we'd ask that you might stay and dine with us. Uh, yes, there was, a, there was a small fee for the dinner, no more than three hours a week and hop back. So why not just invest where you already invested? Amen? Amen. Amen. So you have anything before we close, Chris? So, so that my beautiful is not left out, there's a big old box sitting at the front of our door. She's like, whose box is that? I know that's right. I said, don't bother that box. <laughs> so y'all see, this box in the way, I said, don't worry about that box. And I fixed it like I fixed that mailbox. I know people are missing me. <laughs> So your real gift is at the house because it was too heavy to bring here.
Tomorrow's Cornell. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Okay, so we got this little thing in our church before we part. We, we, we got a man up right here. Q, come on and say something to you. Why? And he hate talking, so this is going to be good. That's right. Yeah, you do. But she almost your mama, though. 
I will not. Without her, I don't know where I would be or what would happen to me. Without her, oh, I would think of something. And I have it. Come here. Oh, come on, <laughs> your mama, Pam. <laughs> Yes, mother. Somebody before you leave, but don't leave. We need some men help. Them. 